Hey viewers, people wanted me to review Degenerate Dax Attachment Pack, which just came out, and I don't mind doing that one bit because it's easier than the other ideas I had this week. Although it's not going to be as easy to review as I'd like because there's not many negative things I can say. I'm really at a loss for words. Is this mod worth using? Absolutely. Unless you've managed to replace every single vanilla weapon in Fallout 4, you're going to get some use out of it. 400 high-quality, lore-friendly attachments is nothing to scoff at. I don't even know where to start. I guess I'll start with compatibility issues, but maybe I should phrase it as a question. What compatibility issues? Because there really aren't any to speak of. This mod goes out of its way to not edit weapon records or leveled lists, so you can use it with pretty much anything. You can use it with whatever rebalance mod you want, tactical reload doesn't need a patch, hell, it even works with Frost. I wouldn't load it alongside Weapons Overhaul Systems because they both have a lot of very similar attachments and switching ammo types with WOS will result in your receiver changing to a WOS one. So while there's no hard conflict, they definitely don't fit together. Nearly all weapon replacers will work as expected, that is, not showing any attachment pack attachments, as long as they don't keep the mod association keyword of the weapon they're replacing. This AA-12 replacer for the combat shotgun works perfectly because it doesn't keep that keyword. Wars is a great example of a mod that reuses vanilla mod association keywords, and as a result you can apply attachments from this pack onto its ballistic weapons, which is not desirable. Or maybe it is, because you can build beautiful monstrosities like the U-Spaz-12. But seriously, 99% of weapon replacers will work fine, so if you want to replace some vanilla weapons but keep others, don't let that preclude you from downloading this wonderful mod. Reanimation mods are also compatible, and so are right-handed remeshes, even the ugly-looking ones. Remeshes that change the entire shape and size of weapons will need a patch, however. A good example is Cadaver's 10mm animations. They make the 10mm pistol smaller, so you'll need to download a patch, or DAX attachments will not display correctly. Balance is not really an issue no matter what kind of load order you have. Attachments modify weapon statistics in a multiplicative way based on their original stats, so if you have a mod that changes those original stats, attachments will automatically adjust accordingly. I didn't find any attachments in the pack that are way out of line with what you could find in the vanilla game. If anything, the attachment pack makes Fallout 4 more balanced by giving crappy weapons like the hunting rifle and minigun a fighting chance in the late game with better attachments. While I was making this video, the mod received an update. There's now an optional implementation patch that integrates attachments into the world. Without the patch, NPC weapons don't spawn with attachments from the pack, and vendors likewise won't sell weapons with its attachments. This is a problem because it means the only way to acquire this mod's content is by crafting it yourself. If you don't have gun nut or science, you're shit out of luck. Thankfully, this recent patch totally alleviates the issue. It's shortened my video by about a minute since I no longer have to recommend alternative mods. Said patch edits a few weapon and object modification records, so compatibility might be somewhat iffy. Definitely check for conflicts in Fallout 4 edit if you want to use the implementation patch. Moving on to the attachments themselves, obviously I can't discuss every attachment since there's approximately 400 of them, but let me go over every weapon in the game alphabetically and discuss what the attachment pack adds to them. I'll skip melee weapons since there's no new attachments for them. That's kind of a shame, but most people really don't care about melee weapons anyways. Who knows, maybe someone will make a big attachment overhaul for them in the future. The 10mm pistol has a 44 Magnum receiver, 4 new barrels, a classic grip, 2 stocks, which are great if you want to make this thing fully automatic since you can't apply a stock in the vanilla game, a drum magazine, which is also very helpful in that endeavor, a spiked compensator, heavy suppressor, and a working laser sight. Great start. The 44 pistol has five extra barrels, including one that resembles a Chiapa Rhino. Chiapa? I don't know how to pronounce that. Two stocks, a nice open glow ring sight, a laser sight, and a 38 caliber conversion. That could be useful for the early game if you're swimming in 38 ammo. The Alien Blaster sadly has no new attachments, poor thing. The Assault Rifle, on the other hand, has many new attachments. Three extra barrels, including one with a shield that increases your damage resistance, four additional stocks, a box magazine that holds 150 rounds, that must have been awkward to get working with vanilla animations, three extra muzzle devices, and another three iron sight options. You can really turn the assault rifle into the machine gun it was always meant to be. The broadsider has grape shot and explosive shot cannonballs, that's all, but that's more than I expected from a weapon most people have never cared enough to use. 
For the combat rifle, the pack adds four barrels, a whopping six stocks, a drum, and quick eject drum mag, which I could have sworn the combat rifle always had to begin with, but no, it's the combat shotgun that had a drum. Anyways, there's three new muzzle devices and automatic variants of the 38 and 308 caliber conversions. The Combat Rifle's twin brother, the Combat Shotgun, gets an insane 9 barrels, 6 stocks, and 5 muzzle devices. If you take both the Assault Barrel and Assault Stock, you can turn this baby into a cursed magazine-fed Spaz-12. The Cryolator has nothing new because no one cares about the Cryolator. The Deliverer Pistol has 4 barrels, one of which makes this gun look like an off-brand Auto 9 from Robocop, 2 grips with attached laser sights, two stocks, a very long extended magazine, four muzzle devices, a higher damage receiver, and an automatic receiver. The double barrel shoddy gets a 50 cal big game receiver, seven new barrel options, one of which adds a badass underbarrel blade, nine stocks, and four muzzle attachments. Oh, and a short scope. The Fat Man has six extra launcher modes, which resulted in this mod adding a few additional ammo types, which you have to craft at a chemistry workbench. One interesting problem I noticed with the harpoon ammo is even though it only costs one shot to fire, you can retrieve multiple harpoon bundles from killed enemies, so as long as you're reasonably accurate, you effectively have infinite ammo with this attachment. I like the mine deploying ammo, but its use is very situational. If something dangerous is chasing you, by the time you pull out your fat man, it will likely be too late to use the mines. I'm not complaining, the chaos is beautiful. The Flamer surprisingly received three extra nozzles and two fuel tanks, which is more than what I expected for this very underappreciated weapon. Flare guns are still unmodifiable, which is a shame. Weapons overhaul systems did the flare gun a lot better. I suppose the flare gun's weapon record would have to be edited to make it modifiable, and maybe that was off the table. The Gamma Gun has four new receivers, or dishes, whatever you want to call them, two grips, a stock, and three extra muzzle thingamajigs. Gatling lasers have four extra barrels, three muzzles, and a laser sight. The Gatling laser is pretty good despite being an energy weapon. It's nice to see attachments that help improve its DPS further. The Gauss rifle gets a shielded barrel, two capacitors, four stocks, and two accelerators. The Gauss rifle was already an incredible weapon, and with this mod you can get extra damage out of it or turn it full auto. Interestingly, if you use a tactical stock and a suppressor, the recoil gets inverted and pushes the weapon downwards which I'm not sure is intentional. Nuka World's handmade rifle got a lot of attention with seven barrels, six stocks, three magazines, three muzzle devices, and a laser sight. I most liked the parts that made it look like the infiltrator rifle from Fallout 3's The Pit DLC. These parts convert the gun into 5.56, which is useful if you're not in Nuka World and are finding 7.62 ammo hard to come by. I saw a service barrel in Fallout 4 edit, but this barrel is not craftable in-game. Perhaps it's coming in a future update. Much like the Gauss Rifle, if you use a heavy stock and an advanced muzzle brake, you can make this gun's recoil pull slightly downwards instead of upwards, which is very beneficial. The Harpoon Gun got a reflex sight and six new types of harpoon, including a stim pack harpoon that strangely still kills targets instead of healing them. None of the harpoons are implemented as new ammo types like the Fat Man has, which is an odd choice. One would think you'd need to use cryo cells to craft cryogenic harpoons, or missiles to make explosive harpoons, but that's not the case. Hunting rifles get a tuned, powerful receiver, marksman barrel, buckhorn sights, six stocks, and three muzzle devices. Being a slow, bolt-action weapon with crappy DPS makes the hunting rifle almost always a bad choice in vanilla, so it's nice to see it get better parts that can help keep it relevant in the late game. The Institute laser gun has an improved reflex sight, 11 extra barrels, a heavy pistol grip, six stocks, four muzzle devices, and a targeting scope. The attachment pack turns this crappy weapon into one that I might actually think about using because the new barrels and grips are very aesthetically pleasing. The Junk Jet has no new attachments, but I don't think anyone is too beat up about that. Laser guns get 11 barrels, including a classic Watts barrel, a heavy pistol grip, 7 stocks, 4 muzzle devices, my favorite is the Tri-Beam Splitter, and the same enhanced targeting scope the Institute Laser has. The laser gun was already exceptionally modular in vanilla, and the attachment pack takes it to an even greater extreme. Of course, due to the energy damage calculation bug, it's not the most optimal weapon to use, especially at later levels once enemies start getting more energy resistance. I wish some of the attachments increased armor penetration to compensate for this deficiency. The laser musket has six extra barrels, and there's a watts barrel for this one too. Three stocks, four muzzle devices, and that targeting scope again. 
added to Far Harbor's lever action rifle is three barrels, three stocks, two muzzle devices, and two new iron sights. I noticed the vintage sight has some floating geometry. The bug report section on the Nexus states that this issue is fixed, but it doesn't seem to be as of the latest version. In any case, it's not a big deal. I love the integrally suppressed barrel. It makes the gun feel like a Delisle carbine. This is a fun weapon to use when you have 4570 ammo to spare. Just remember to use bullet counted reload. The minigun has six new barrels. Most interestingly, a 10mm barrel that doesn't need to spin up, but does less damage. There's also three sights, two of which feature shields that give you extra damage resistance, which you might need when you're standing out in the open spraying 5mm rounds at enemies for half a minute to drain their health bars. The minigun's attachments have two tiny little typos. Shielded is spelled wrong in shielded barrel, and ballistic shield is missing an extra L. That's the length I have to go to to criticize this mod, finding little typos. The missile launcher gets a five-shot cylinder and a shielded barrel. There's also a muzzle brake and an accelerator brake that makes the missiles hit their targets instantly. And there's a reflex sight. Pipe weapons were already very modular in vanilla, but you can always use more variety. The pipe bolt action gets four extra barrels, five stocks, and three muzzle devices. The semi-auto pipe gun has four barrels, five stocks, and the same three muzzle devices as the bolt action pipe gun. The pipe revolver is most impressive of all, with five barrels, and I love the look of the outlaw and gunslinger barrels. There's two pistol grips and three stocks, those same three muzzle devices, and incredibly cool shotgun and 38 caliber conversions. This gun can look so badass now. The plasma gun gets six barrels, most notably a plasma caster barrel and a launcher barrel. An eco grip that gives you more ammo, five stocks, a raised carry handle sight, and a launcher sight. The grenade launcher barrel is exceptionally powerful, but comes with a risk of getting yourself caught by splash damage. The plasma caster barrel does great damage too, without that risk. Far Harbor's radium rifle gets six barrels, five stocks, three magazines that convert the weapon into 556, a coffin magazine, and four muzzle devices. The railway rifle has five extra barrels, three stocks, three muzzle devices, and receivers that convert the weapon into 50 caliber or make it fire multiple railway spikes at once. Submachine gun is very interesting with two receivers that convert the weapon into 10mm, four new barrels, six stocks, four stick magazines which change the weapon's animations, but unfortunately these new animations cause the first person power armor footsteps bug, and three muzzle devices. I've always considered the submachine gun to be a terrible weapon, unless you're talking about the spray and prey, so the higher damage receivers and recoil compensating stocks are much appreciated. The Syringer has no new attachments, and neither does the Tesla Rifle or Thirst Zapper. Lastly, and I'm sorry if I missed any weapons, we have Nuka World's Western Revolver. It's got four barrels, two grips, one of which needs a Deathclaw hand to craft, a Marksman stock, and caliber conversions to 4570. There's also some weird dual reticule target sights. I like how the attachments weren't just copied over from the 44 pistol, these are all completely different, which helps distinguish the Western Revolver from the 44. That's a lot of damn attachments, and most of them are quite useful depending on the build you're going for. Aside from a few tiny nitpicks, every complaint I could make about this mod would boil down to, I just want even more of it. I'd love to see extra attachments added over time with future updates, especially for the weapons that are not currently covered. But anyways, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick little review. There's bigger videos on the way, and I need to get back to making them, so toodles.